Epoxides are a unique class of cyclic ethers in which both of the carbons linked to oxygen are also linked to each other. This creates a three-membered ring containing the two sp3 or saturated carbons and the ether or epoxide oxygen. Just considering the geometry of this molecule and the three-dimensional model really confirms this, we can see that the epoxide is highly strained and this means it's a unique ether really in a class of its own because they can be opened the CO bonds are susceptible to cleavage in a way that the CO bonds of ordinary ethers generally are not. Thanks to the polarization of the CO bonds toward oxygen and the fact that this is a highly strained ring, both carbons in an epoxide ring are electrophilic. The epoxide oxygen, just like an oxygen in a plain vanilla ether, is weakly nucleophilic and weakly basic. And this is due to the two lone pairs really present at the epoxide oxygen. From an orbital perspective, the reactivity of epoxides can be broken down into nucleophilic and electrophilic behavior. And the nucleophilic behavior is really due to the non-bonding lone pair orbital on oxygen. Here's an image showing the 2p non-bonding lone pair orbital on the epoxide oxygen. The electrophilic reactivity can really be attributed to the sigma star CO orbital. And the thing I wanted to point out about this orbital that you should notice is that it's actually bent. If you look at the axis of the hybrid from the carbon, it runs about this direction, the axis from the hybrid on oxygen is not parallel to the axis for the carbon's contributing hybrid orbital. These form an angle that's not 180 degrees, it's less than 180 degrees. And the fact that this is bent leads to relatively poor overlap between the hybrids and a relatively low energy for this unfilled orbital. This makes it more reactive than the CO antibonding orbital in a typical ether. In fact, you see a similar effect in cyclopropanes where this oxygen is replaced with a saturated carbon. And this is particularly true when the cyclopropane is polarized with electron donating groups on one end and withdrawing groups on the other. Going back to the original drawing of the epoxide, one thing you may wonder is if both carbons of the epoxide are electrophilic, how do we know which one reacts in a situation when an epoxide is treated with a nucleophile? And this is a great question. It gets at the site selectivity of epoxide opening reactions, which we'll discuss in detail here in a second. And one of the ways to answer the question has to do with which of the carbons has more partial positive charge. Because we know from the calculated orbital energies and just empirically from the reactivity of epoxides that these bonds tend to break toward oxygen, we can draw a couple of non-traditional resonance forms that highlight the partial positive charge present on the carbon atoms. So for example, we can break this bond that I'm showing here to form a resonance structure in which the oxygen of the epoxide is negatively charged and the carbon involved in the bond that broke is positively charged. And I'm gonna do my best here to show the atoms connected to this carbon not moving at all. So this is certainly a non-traditional resonance form because all we've done is broken a sigma bond. Nonetheless, it gives us great insight into the reactivity of epoxides that's nucleophilic and basic at oxygen and electrophilic at the carbons. Of course, we can do the same thing with the other CO bond. And this leads to a different resonance form in which the epoxide oxygen atom remains negative, but the positive charge now lives on a CH2 group, and I'll draw that out explicitly. The positive charge is now residing on the other carbon of the epoxide ring. With these resonance forms drawn, we can now compare the importance of one resonance form versus another. And where they really differ and where we should focus on our attention is the carbon bearing the positive charge. It's a primary carbon in this resonance structure on the bottom, but a secondary carbon in the structure in the upper right. And if we think about general rules for carbocation stability, which can be mapped onto this importance comparison pretty well, what we conclude is that the more substituted carbon is more stable with positive charge. And the analogy for resonance structures is the resonance structure in which positive charge resides on the more substituted carbon is more important to the true structure or is a greater contributor to the true structure. This means that in the starting epoxide, and quantum chemical calculations will bear this out, the partial positive charge on the more substituted carbon is significantly greater than the partial positive charge on the less substituted carbon. So any reactivity that's driven by charge, driven by electrostatic interactions between the epoxide and, say, a nucleophile, 
will tend to occur at this more substituted carbon with the greater partial positive charge. We're going to use this idea in discussing the reactivity of epoxides in a second.